All right, guys. Uh, what's going on? So, for this test review on work, power, and energy, I want to go through these problems with you guys. So we have a, uh, you know, a good understanding of what to expect on our test tomorrow. All right. So let's zoom in here. In physics, let's put the autofocus log on. All right, in physics, work is defined as force times distance, okay? It's in the triangle right here as well. W is work. You, you guys usually will get the equations, yeah. So work is equal to force times distance. So that's wicked easy. We're going to let it D. What was what is the unit for work? Yes, joules. Okay, for force we're in newtons, distance we're in meters. So when you multiply them, a joule is also sometimes called a newton meter. All right, now we have power. What is power defined as? So power is going to be defined as the amount of work done on an object divided by the time it takes to do that, so or the rate at which work is done. So there was a problem in an assignment the other day where uh, I saw a few people get it wrong, where two people go up um, a flight of stairs, all right, and one of them is walking, one of them is running, and it asks which one required more power. And people were like, well, they require the same amount of power. No, they require the same amount of work because their force, their weight, has to go up the same set of stairs. So they're moving the same distance. But power is that work divided by time. So the one that is going to take less time, which would be you running, that would be all right, something that would require more power. So this one should have been what? C? I think so. Okay, what is the unit of power? Good, all right. That is joules, this is seconds. And that is a watt. Unit of force, we've been doing that for quite some time. All right, that is a newton. That's how it's spelled. N-E-W-T-O-N. So to determine the amount of work done in dragging a box across the floor, if you push it with a force of 235 newtons and the box moves 21 meters. Okay, so the triangle up here, work is equal to force times distance. You have a force. All right, of 235. And then you're going to multiply it out by 21. And that comes out to be 4,935. And work is measured in joules, so we're looking at letter D. All right, number seven. How much power do you generate in dragging that box from problem number six in 15 seconds? How would I do that? Well, power is work divided by time. We don't have anything. Oh, wait, they say it's from number six. So you needed the answer from number six. So if you don't get the right answer there, you're going to get this one wrong as well. Okay, and in 15 seconds. So take that answer and divide it by 15, and you're going to crank out 329. And that is watts. Okay. So a person that weighs 600 newtons gets on an elevator. The elevator lists them 6 meters in 10 seconds. 
how much power was used? Well, power, power is work divided by time. Now, we don't have anything straight off the rip with joules in it. So, first thing you're going to want to do is find the work, and then take that answer and divide it by that time. So, the work is force times distance, so I'm taking 600 times 6, okay, which is, comes out to be 3,600 joules. And then it says the elevator is going to wind up lifting this in 10 seconds. And power is work divided by time. So what is that, 360? Cool. All right, can someone actually tell me, if an object has kinetic energy, what must it be doing? Anyone? Yeah, it's got to be moving, all right, in the equation. Kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. So it's very important, the fact that it is moving. If the object is not moving, there is no kinetic energy. Energy. Energy is changed from one form to another with no net loss or gain. Sometimes true, always true, never true. So, it, what is the conservation of energy? That, that law basically states energy cannot be created nor destroyed, it can only be transferred from one form to another. So, even in a certain situation where the kinetic energy before may be different after, the fact is that energy just doesn't disappear. It has to get transferred somewhere. So yeah, it's always going to uh, transfer. Uh, what two factors are needed to find kinetic energy? Well, yeah, mass and velocity. You have the equation of M right there. All right. So those are the two variables or factors that y'all are going to need. Potential energy. Ah, what about this one? What do we got here? Anyone? So an object's potential energy, we're talking gravitational potential energy. So that depends on its height and its location. All right, so potential energy is mass times gravity times height. So it's position, it's height, it's location, position, however it's worded, that's going to be the guy. Speed is not in the equation. Size. So you may be tricked by size because it can be like, well, the bigger the object, the more mass. It's not necessarily true, right? A basketball has more mass than a, a beach ball, like a big blown up beach ball. Even so size is, is relative there in that case, all right? It doesn't always wind up meaning it's going to have more mass. So, yes, we're looking at B. Calculate the amount of potential energy a 50 kilogram object will have when it is held at a height of 2.5 meters above the floor. Okay. So, potential energy, the equation, we just wrote it up there, mgh. What is the mass? 50 kilograms. Okay. What is gravity? On Earth, they don't tell us what gravity is, right? That's something you guys have had to just know we the actual uh, value is 9.8 but for our for the simplicity of calculations we're just going to use 10 and what is the height yep 
So getting all that together and multiplying everybody out, you should get 250. Now, energy is measured in the same unit as work. They're measured in joules. Okay, so how much work is done by holding a 15 Newton basket while waiting in line at the grocery store for a time of 180 seconds? Okay, so what is work again? Force times distance. Okay, we have a force of 15 Newtons. All right, distance. I don't see a distance, so what, what does that mean? What am I doing there? Do I multiply it or divide it by the 180 seconds? No. So remember, guys, for work to be done, the object has to move in the direction that the force is being applied. So if you're just kind of standing in line, okay, and you're just holding the box. I don't know what a person looks like. Well, sort of. And you're just holding it. He'll hold in that box. You're applying a force upward. But if it doesn't tell us that it's moving upward, all right, even though your, your force applied is up, the distance here or displacement is zero. So 15 times zero is zero joules. So yeah, you like that one? See, you've gone too far. Bruh, it's B. I've actually had people in the past put B or D as an answer. And I was just like, no. So, yeah, zero. Okay, as a pendulum swings back and forth, which statement is correct regarding its energy? So, from the video, guys, that you should have just watched on Ed Puzzle, okay, on kinetic and potential energy. Potential energies are the maximum, all right, at its the highest displacement points. All right, if you're just to let a ball hang on a string like this, that's where it's going to chill, okay. And relative to its position, that would be like height zero. So your potential energy at that point is pretty much zero. And when this thing is, you know, rocked up this way and it's it's going to be coming back and forth, its maximum speed is going to be here. So the potential energy is max. And then as it goes rocks upward, okay, it's losing kinetic energy, losing kinetic energy. Why is the kinetic energy zero there? Because the pendulum stops at that instant in time. It stops, loses all of its speed, changes direction to go back and forth. So that is why the uh, kinetic energies are zero at these positions and potential energies are max. So which letter decides that? D. Yeah, D. All right, so even here, like again in the video, they probably do this exact same drawing. At this point, you have some potential energy still and some kinetic energy. You have a combination of both. So, yeah. Okay. In the following diagram, first 16 and 17, list the points in order of least to greatest potential energy. Um, potential energy. What is potential energy? Mass times gravity times height. So very simply, guys, the potential energy, the higher it is, the more potential energy it has. So who has the greatest? 
which one's the highest? And then which one's the next? Then? B. Then? And C. So C is the lowest. So uh, some people will get this wrong because they just go greatest to least. You have to be careful upon how it's being worded, right? Least to greatest. All right. So least to greatest, you could have just said, okay, well, then you could have gone lowest to highest. Either way, that, that would have worked. But the, the higher it is up from the ground, the more potential energy it has. So which letter are we looking at? C D Bay. Uh, all right, so B. Shabam. Okay. List the points in order of greatest to least. Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is one half mass times the velocity squared. So the points where it's going fastest, it's going to have the greatest kinetic energy. So here they have the greatest, and over here is the least. So which points do you think, how do we do this without, without any math numbers? So for a roller coaster, there's something called the mechanical energy. The total mechanical energy, ME, that is found by taking potential energy plus kinetic energy. Now, the mechanical energy of a closed, isolated system, so there's no other forces interfering, no friction, air resistance, nothing like that. Once you know what the mechanical energy is, it's the same at every single point. Um, so since A right here, we're, we're basically, if, uh, if you're not told that it is moving, its velocity is zero. So that means all the energy is potential here. So just like if an object were from a, dropping from a height down to the ground, it's all potential here because it hasn't dropped yet. And then the instant it like makes contact with the ground, all right, because the height is zero here, then all of this would have to be equal to kinetic energy. So it is the opposite of how we would have found the potential energy. So where A here is the greatest potential, it's the least amount of kinetic energy because it's not moving. So they want least to greatest. So A, then, let's see. It's going to gain speed, gain speed, gain speed. It's fastest here. Now it's starting to decrease its velocity a little bit, but it's still very fast. D is actually faster than B, which most people don't like, but it is. And then coming around the loop, E, come back down. So the order that we're looking for is going to wind up being um, the greatest. What did they ask? They asked for greatest to least. Okay, so greatest to least. C is the greatest. A is the least. The next highest is E, then B, then D. So the greatest kinetic energy to the least kinetic energy is this order. Oh, snap. So yeah, just be careful about what they're asking about, all right, greatest and or least. Here, all right, is basically about the height, all about the height, height, height. Lowest kinetic energy to highest. Um, lowest kinetic energy is going to be the ones where it is at the, the highest point. Which one is at the highest point? One. And then you have, looks like, five, four, two, three, six. Which is, which letter? Two, three, uh, letter C. According to the definition of work, pushing on a rock accomplishes no work unless there is 
D, movement in the same direction. The metric unit for the metric unit of a joule is a unit of potential energy. Yes, work. Yes, and kinetic. Yes, all. Potentially, uh, potential energy uh, of a box on a shelf relative to the floor is a measure of the power. No, the energy it has because of its motion. Well, no, it's not moving. The weight the of the box times the distance above the floor. Well, that's going to be yes because potential energy is mass times gravity times height, and weight of an object is mass times gravity. So, law of conservation of energy is a statement that says energy cannot be created nor destroyed. All right, uh, it can only be transferred. So, must be conserved. I'm going to say that the total amount of energy is constant because energy can't be created nor destroyed. Okay. These problems, okay, it basically in the underlying part, you tell me whether it is kinetic or potential. If it's moving, it's kinetic. All right, if it's a certain height above something, it's potential. And then you go and you solve for the missing pieces. Um, Okay, something the ball leaves your hand with this. So it has KE. Maybe a bit of a 20. All right, it's not moving. So we're looking at potential energy, velocity, kinetic energy, etc. Okay, and you go through and you calculate it. If it's kinetic energy, one half times the mass times V squared. So you're squaring the velocity times the mass of 1.7. Divide that by 2 or multiply by 1.5, and you're going to get your, your final answer. And in this piece here, potential energy, kinetic energy. So at the top, it's all potential. Bottom, it's going to be all kinetic. So all the potential here is 0. doesn't matter if, if it's here and I drop it or if it's here and I roll it. Here, it would be 30. So the first one would be 30. At the top, it's 30. All right. How many steps are there? One, two, three. So it would lose. You would have to assume 10 each time. So the potential energy there would need to be 20. And here they're asking for kinetic energy. At the bottom, the potential energy is zero. Since mechanical energy is constant for the system, all right. No matter what, you have when you have the two together at the same spot, they have to add up and equal the same value. Okay, so it's the same idea here and here. Yes, guys, please make sure everybody finishes that. All right, we just kind of went through it, but still finish it and submit.